When New York City comes under attack from an alien invasion, a woman and other survivors try to find a way to safety. Let's talk about this Quiet Place franchise for a little bit before we get into the details of this review, because it's ultimately one of the most consistent franchises running today, and even though it only has three movies at the moment, uh, still waiting on part three of A Quiet Place, which would make it four, who knows how many more we could get after that, this entry in prequel into this story is no different from the others. I think it's another great, you know, entry into this franchise. And I actually was really excited with some, you know, went in with some big expectations and I thought my expectations were met. I, I thought it was really good, really great. And you know, what, what about, what makes this franchise special? I think is the experience of going to the theater. Like you don't know if you should order popcorn, don't know if you should order like candy because you don't want to be loud with it. Cause I remember seeing the first one I, in theaters, you know, some people really missed out on that one, but I remember seeing the first one and I, I didn't get any popcorn and I just got a drink and I was like I didn't want to make any any noise because that movie is really quiet the first one's really quiet compared to the part two and compared to this one this one is pretty quiet but I will say part one is still the more quieter one you can still get popcorn in this one don't worry you're not going to be too loud there's some very loud moments in here where you can start eating it all but yeah I thought this one was really great and it's directed by uh, Michael Cernoski I think that's how you say his name he were all he worked on uh pig the movie with Nicolas Cage that I thought was actually pretty good so this is a big change of pace for him he's going from like a really low budget movie I think pig was like a seven million dollar budget or seven to ten million dollars and he's going to almost 70 million dollar budget right here basically like a big a big increase in a budget there and a big change of pace and i really enjoyed his style that he brought to the series you know it does feel really different from john krasinski's quiet place movies and i feel like i feel like what, what made me like this one a lot was that it did it did feel more stylistic you know i felt like you know they took a little bit of risk with the shots here took a little risk with the direction and i really did like that he went for that risk and i will say even though it has a 70 million dollar budget it's easily going to make that money back i think it's tracking for like 60 million opening weekend already almost making the budget back it's going to be a huge win for horror movies and horror box office as a whole i think it's going to easily be the biggest you know horror movie of 2024 but you got a lot of horror movies coming up to really challenge this one you got maxine next week then two weeks you got long legs so horror is really thriving this summer which is interesting i who knew we we're gonna get so many horror movies this summer but i'm really enjoying it but i gotta say the direction here was absolutely fantastic and as the title suggests, it focuses on the start of the apocalypse, which is basically the first day and then some days after that. It doesn't all take place in one day like some people are thinking. It takes place in either two or three days. I couldn't really keep count. I think it is three days, though. And it takes place in maybe the loudest and most hectic city known to man, New York City. And why anyone would choose to live in New York, I have no idea. You know, I don't know why all these people live there, but, you know, if it's for your job, that makes sense. But if you choose to live there then you might be a little bit crazy because I know it is pretty expensive there and people are really rude in that city. And, you know, all these people are literally just dying in this movie because everyone, everyone just honks in New York. Everyone's yelling at each other. No one ever shuts up. So that's why everyone's dying in this movie. And, you know, if this ever happened in the real world, uh, something tells me that this would go down very differently. It wouldn't be the aliens taking out the humans. It would be the humans taking out the humans. Because you know you'd have people being quiet. Someone would be talking. And then you'd have one person say, Shh, shut up, shut up. And then there's just a fight start. It breaks out. And then everyone dies before the alien even gets there. New York is not a nice place. It's a very scary place at times. And a very loud place. So this movie taking place there on day one was really cool, really interesting. You know, it does take place here day one, but it takes place everywhere day one, which is interesting about here, this one that there's still kind of like no answer of where these people came from, which is kind of disappointing. I do want to kind of know where these people came from, where the aliens came from, why are they here and all that. What's the really like goal here? It is kind of an interesting discussion. I don't know if they'd ever go into that in other movies. I don't know if they'd ever really win this war against all of them because they're probably like, uh, you know, having kids and all that. These aliens having babies. Who knows how their reproductive organs work, systems work and all that. But yeah, I feel like that answer we should be getting in another movie because I feel like we're kind of treading the same story here. I feel like the writing was a little bit weak. But I will say another big negative for me was the score. This one has a different composer than the last two Quiet Place movies. And it does it does kind of need that, you know, Quiet Place iconic theme and score that it, this one's missing, which sucks. You know, it's missing it. So it does feel very different. And it, may, it you know, kind of loses that special effect that the first two Quiet Place movies do. But I will say, you know, a score is good, but it just didn't feel as special. 
Let's get to the cast. First, we have Lupita Nyong'o, the main lead of the film. She plays Sam, who has cancer and living and is staying at a hospice. She's basically done with life because she knows she will basically die soon. But once she goes to a puppet show, everything changes. But I gotta say, that little puppet show in here, that was a beautiful, beautiful scene. Beautiful, beautifully directed, beautiful score in that. And Lupita, she, you know, she's doing a great job in horror movies with this and Us. I think Us is like her best performance of all time. She has fantastic eye acting here because she can't really talk throughout most of the movie. And all she wanted to do was get some New York City pizza. And I can't blame her because that's a very good goal when you're about to die. Uh, Alex Wolf has also a small part as a nurse in the hospice talking to Lupita in the beginning of the movie. He's not really in it a lot, but I did still like his screen presence here. Uh, Jamon Hansu, he is actually an interesting part of this movie because he does provide some connection activity through these movies because he showed up in quiet place part two on the island so now you get to see kind of how he started in the city how he got to the island and all that so i did kind of like that part and like that element and that element might play into how part three of a quiet place goes but i'm not going to get into any spoilers here because i don't really want to but it might play into how part three goes which is really interesting i really really did like how they're going for that connectivity there and then last one we got joseph quinn you know i've only seen him in stranger things like most of the rest of the world but i'm really excited to see him in gladiator 2 this year and fantastic four i think that comes out next year because here's my favorite part of this film as much as i love lupita nyong'o in here i thought that Joseph Quinn's character was written better and I think he provides a lot more of the emotion and he actually helps get more emotion out of Lupita's character. His story is actually kind of more sad because his character is doesn't actually live in New York. He's just there for law school. So he can't he can never really get home at this point. He can never see his family again back in England, which is actually really disappointing. And you know, he's he he shows up because he's very lonely. He's a very lonely character. He has no one and he just starts following Lupita's character and that kind of just leads them going together. But I really did like his uh, chemistry with Lupita Nyong'o. I thought, you know, this whole cast is great. And then you got the cat, Frodo the cat. You know, he's the MVP of the film for me. He's a terrific cat actor, I'll say that. But I have to say, if you have a cat, if you have any animal, I have a cat too, they would definitely die. Like, all these animals would die. Like, cats are very loud. They're always just meowing. Dogs are always barking. I feel like the only animal that could survive is maybe a fish at this point. Like, they would all die. And But, but the funny thing is about this cat, this cat just walks... It walks, doesn't really make any noise, so Peter just carries it. I wonder how much training and kind of practice they had to get with this cat, you know, Joseph Quinn, Lupita Nyong'o, for this cat just to, like, rub up against them, you know, just stay in their arms. And that's a very nice cat if that cat didn't have to train with them a lot. I don't, I'm not going to spoil if the cat lives or dies, but he does provide some fun, you know, fun scenes in this very tense movie. Let's talk about how scary this one is because A Quiet Place, you know, this franchise, they're one of the very few movies that take control of the PG-13 rating and use it very well because the close-ups of these monsters are great here. And I got I got kind of chills, I got shivers uh, and some of these scenes in this one, like it, it does, it does kind of get scarier than the first two in this one, but there are some scary moments in the other ones. Like, I think that these movies are actually kind of scary at times for being rated, uh, for being PG-13. So I really do like how they take advantage of that rating. I just loved how fast they moved in this one. The monsters when they're chasing people, like it does get pretty tense in this one. So if you do have any kids that maybe want to see it, maybe, you know, probably take a step back from that one. But you know, it's not, you know, scary, scary, but it does get pretty tense at times, I'd say. There's only a couple jump scares. I think it's just like the look of the monsters that would probably scare little kids. And we'll say it's a short movie. It's a quick hundred minute horror movie. Nothing better than that. You know, you love to go into a short movie, come outside and just, you know, you don't have to sit in the movie theater for three hours. Even though a three hour movie can be great, short movie is also great. It's going to get more people into the theater, get more show times going at the theater. And I thought that runtime was utilized pretty well. So overall, A Quiet Place Day One was great and it continues the franchise in a really good way. The script is weak at times, but the characters and the emotions really take you home in ways that matter the most. The creatures are back and are still very scary and the ending might be setting up a quiet place part three which is really cool to see all that connectivity so i'm gonna give this one an eight out of ten you know this past week i've liked every movie i saw in theaters with the quiet place kinds of kindness and horizon so there's movies for everyone every different person every different genre so if you want to go out and see a new movie this week go see these if you want to see an old movie quiet uh, inside out 2 is already making a lot of money so there's a lot to see this week before july july we're gonna get a lot but that's my review for a quiet place day one leave your thoughts down below in the comments if you did enjoy this review make Make sure to leave like subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out